and welcome to the lesson video on comparing classification methods. In this video, we're going to talk about some general principles for determining which classification method we might expect to work best on a given data set. So first principle, the best performing algorithm will usually be the one whose assumptions best match the data. So let's think about the assumptions that have gone into some of the classification methods we've seen so far. Linear discriminant analysis, or LDA, where we assume that all classes have Gaussian distributions and that all these distributions have the same covariance. A little more relaxed assumptions in QDA or quadratic discriminant analysis. We're still assuming the classes each have a Gaussian distribution, but we're allowing those Gaussian distributions to be different among the classes. And then in k-nearest neighbors, we really don't have any assumptions. And if you think about the decision boundaries that separate classes, in LDA, those decision boundaries are going to be lines or planes or hyperplanes in some dimension. In QD, they have a parabolic uh, geometry, meaning there'll be parabolas in two dimensions or, or higher dimensional versions of parabolas. And in K-nearest neighbors, we have very flexible decision boundaries. There's not really any restriction on what they can be uh, given enough data. Principle number two. Performance will be poor if the model makes assumptions that are not represented in the data. And so these are called bias errors. So if we're using a data set where the classes don't have Gaussian distributions or the decision boundaries between the classes really needs to be something other than a linear quadratic, then LDA and QDA will work poorly because they're making decisions that are not represented in the data. And these are called bias errors. The only way to get rid of bias errors is to pick an algorithm or a method that will be able to uh, tune to the, to, the, to the characteristics of the data. Uh, principle number three, classification methods with fewer assumptions have lower performance unless there's sufficient training data. And so these are called variance errors. So if your data does separate with linear decision boundaries or if the, the classes really are given by Gaussian distributions, then LDA and QDA will work better than KNN, um, although some of that uh, can be overcome by adding more training data. So having larger training data, something like KNN, will be able to train better and better towards those uh, linear decision boundaries or things that are present in the data that you might want in your classification method. And these types of errors are called variance errors, where our classification method has too much variance or allows to, is too flexible to, uh, to train easily to the, um, to the characteristics of the data. So here's a, a, a chart with showing the bias variance trade-off. And I've added logistic regression to this chart. I'm not really sure whether we should put how to compare logistic regression in the best way to LDA. They both have linear decision boundaries. They just make different assumptions about the data. It's not where as LDA and QDA, clearly QDA is a relaxed assumptions from, in comparison to LDA. Logistic regression is on par with LDA, perhaps, um, but I'll put it above it just for the sake of a nice chart. And logistic regression, remember, we assume that the log odds are the near function of the input variables. Also, logistic regression only really used for binary decisions, right? Predicting probability of a win for a sports team or political uh, party or, or a situation like that. And so as we see, in, as you go up in this chart, we're making greater assumptions on the data. And as you go down, you're, we're allowing greater variance. So greater bias means potential for bias errors. Greater variance means potential for variance errors, but also more flexibility uh, as you go down. A uh, review for what we've talked about today. I think the main principle, the best performing algorithm be the one whose assumptions best match the data. And ultimately, although we can get some intuition from the principles we've talked about, Testing with a test drain split uh, is required to determine the best performance performing data. Thank you for watching.